Welcome to ISAF Monitor. I have the honor to have Julian Lee here, the Managing Director of Apply International from South Korea. Julian, today we're going to talk about um, South Korea, the outbound market, educational trends. But first of all, I would like to introduce yourself a little bit to our audience. Yes. Um, I'm Julian Lee. I'm currently running an agency called Inter Apply International. Um, for the past 10 years, I used to be a UK special um, agent for a um, couple of companies, but this year I set up my own company and I want to expand my um, portfolio to other countries as well, um, such as US and Canada, um, Australia and New Zealand. Um, this is my first year um, starting my agency, so I'm about to send the students to overseas, but for the past 10 years, every year I sent about 100 students. Um, first agency I worked at, it was focusing on junior students. And then the second agency I worked at for about four years, it was focusing on university and above. So I have experience in both levels. So I want to combine those two experiences and um, open my op door to all the students. Hmm. Thank you for, for sharing that information about your agency. Korea has been known as one of the major outbound destinations since the last 80s. It's the outbound educational markets. It's very well government supported. Um, how would you describe the situation right now? Because there are some rumors or a lot of educators might be worried that numbers are going to drop. Okay. Um, Korean young students have been going to overseas um, since late 80s, um, more um, early 90s. and. The number has been increasing until the recession, world recession in 2008, and it did drop a bit after, the, after that. But besides the um, young elementary school students, the middle school students and high school students and um, university and above, the number didn't change so much after um, 2009, so it's been quite steady. But I think what happened was when a lot of Korean parents were st um, sending students when they're such a young age, after 10 years or so, um, they were looking at some negative effects. For example, some students didn't forgot to how to speak Korean <laughs> when they left their country when they were five or six. And the parents thought that um, they were spending too much money for too many years before they go to the university. So um, they uh, were better aware of um, the budget uh, they have to think of. So um, instead of sending their students to let's say five or 10 years before they go to the university, um, they send students to um, about three or five, four, five years before the university level. So um, the middle school students and high school students, um, the number they go to the overseas, it's been quite steady, but elementary school students, the number did drop. Hmm. You mentioned the, the shorter time span students are gonna, uh, Korean students are studying abroad. Um, you think you have the feeling that's an ongoing trend? Yes, I think it's an ongoing trend. Um, about five years ago, I saw um, a lot of Japanese students going to overseas. They studied for a shorter period, and Korean students had always been long-term students, but now um, they want to um, spend time traveling as well as studying English in one specific country. So it is an um, ongoing trend that um, sh the studying period is shortened. You mentioned that the parents were more aware of the budget. Yes. Um, are there any, any other reasons for that? Um, instead of having their children in overseas whole time, I think now they want their children back in the country on the vacation and so on. So they spend time with them and they make sure that they do not forget the Korean culture and the language. Korea has always been famous for um, teaching outside of the classroom, one-to-one -one teaching. How can educators enhance that strategy or how can they, yeah, what do they need to provide to, to offer this service? Okay. When I um, contact the students that I sent overseas, um, sometimes they feel um, they need a little more support than um, they get in the classroom because um, usually the schools um, maximize um, the class number, um, max the class number by eight or 10, but students don't have enough chance to speak, especially. And I tell them about the one-to-one -one classes uh, that are available in most institutions. And students listen to me, and then they book um, maybe three to five one-to-one -one classes a week. And the feedback I got was very wonderful. They said um, their speaking level became you know, very uh, higher, and they were getting help with the homework. Sometimes with the um, IELTS preparation, teachers were, um, teachers were very helpful with that. So 
Um, I introduced the one-to-one -one classes to most of the students. So you would definitely recommend it for every ed educator to offer that service? Yes, yes. It, it is very um, good classes for Korean students to have. Would you agree with the saying that personal contact is key to success, especially in this part of the world and also in South Korea, therefore? I agree. In two levels, before departure, um, they want to know they can have answers for the questions they have um, before they go to leave the country. But after they go, um, agencies contact with the parents and students. If there are so many issues, they want to make sure that um, agencies have close contact with the school so that any problems that might occur can be solved. Lovely answer. Um, let's look at maybe best practice cases of um, institutions who are successful with their marketing strategies in, in Korea. Are there any specific examples you could share? I think in Korean market, um, as far as um, language school is concerned, um, in the UK, ELC Bristol is the most popular um, school and successful school because they run a um, single program. All the students go to the class um, 9, 9 a.m. in the morning and they study for 21 hours and they don't have any other courses, just the general English or academic English in the same number of the week. And they um, limit the Korean um, national anthem mix by about 15%, I remember. And it works very well. And they always have a waiting list for the Korean students. And so that's the best example um, in school in the UK. How do Korean students inform themselves? Is, are they very active in the internet? Is Facebook an issue? Um, where would I launch my marketing campaign if I would be an educator? Facebook didn't hit Korea um, yet. Um, Twitter is becoming to be popular, but at the moment, a um, blog is the most popular tool um, on SNS. Let's go back to Korea as an educational outbound market. What destinations are popular among Korean students, and is there maybe a change in the recent years, or is there a change in the programs or the courses they are taking? Um, the U.S. has been the most popular destination for Korea for as long as I can remember. Um, Last year, about 30% of Korean students went overseas, went to the U um, U.S. And next to that is China. China has been um, increasing quite a bit because Korean students and parents know that if they go to China, they can study English as well as Chinese. And the, um, the status of China in global economy has been increasing. So China is the next. And other destinations include um, Australia, New Zealand, the UK as well. And students do go to Philippines a lot. To Philippines? Why are they going to Philippines? Um, in Philippines, they can take one-to-one um, -one classes in very low price. And some students are very insecure about their English level if they're a beginner. Um, I think they're not really beginner because they know alphabet and know basic words and they can understand. but. Before they go to um, English-speaking countries, they want to be prepared for um, two weeks or um, two weeks to 12 weeks or so. And also, um, some students in Korea, they have to meet the English requirement of the universities they already applied. And if they go to the Philippines, they, they have very intensive program where they study for 20 um, hours a day or so. So it works for some Korean students. And again, the budget, it's very, um, the price is very low. So we talked about the destinations. Let's talk a little bit about program and courses. What program and courses are popular among Korean students traditionally? And maybe where do you see the trend is going? General English program has been very popular for Korean students. But for um, university students at the moment, they have been studying English um, in country when they're, since they were very young. So. They're not so much interested in general English anymore. Um, last year, I had one student who was about to finish university. And she, even though she didn't have any plan to go to um, postgraduate level school in other countries, she wanted to study um, pre-master's program just to make sure it's very academic English. Then um, if she does want to change her mind, and if she wants to go to graduate school later on, she can use that. Um, certificate. So academic English is a lot more popular and also um, Cambridge exam examination courses became very, it's becoming very popular in Korea.
That sounds like pathway programs are very popular. Would you agree, or is that do I see that right? Yes. Um, some of the institutions, such as um, CEG into Study Group, have been launching a lot of pathway programs, and it's been very popular in Korea. Let's take a look into the future. Where do you see the development of the Korean outbound education market is going in the future? I think in long, long term, the number of the students who go to overseas will increase, but the time they spend in overseas might decrease. For example, I think some Koreans are starting to consider um, 50 plus courses, and sometimes summer courses, or one week or two courses. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for so much for sharing this information on Korea as an outbound destination. And I hope to see you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you.